Hey friends, welcome back to another vet school vlog. In today's video, I'll be sharing my experience being on equine ambulatory rotation. This video is for pre-vet students or anyone who wants to know what type of horse vet work we get up to at the vet school. And I'll be sharing some common clinical conditions and first opinion and links to resources if you want to learn more about them. Let's go. Good morning everybody, so today I'm on equine ambulatory week and we just received calls to do vaccine and dentals and since it's first opinion work, we are going to meet at Katie's house and then we will meet the vet at the call and yeah, hopefully learn some stuff. Okay, bye! So one of the common first opinion cases we see are equine dentistry cases. So routine dentistry is done in horses because in the wild, in the past, they have dentition evolved to eat on tough grasses and graze for long periods of time. Now we've domesticated them, they spend less time grazing and they eat a more easily digestible diet as well as concentrates. As a result, they don't wear their teeth down enough, so they end up with sharp edges on their teeth. They also have a wider upper jaw and a narrower lower jaw. So what happens is you get sharper edges on the outer part of the upper teeth and the sharper edges on the inner part of their lower teeth. So what dentistry does is you rasp the tooth so that they get even uh, surfaces because if you leave them sharp they tend to catch on their tongue and cheek and then cause ulcers which can cause discomfort for these horses. In this video you can see the vet putting a gag into the horse's mouth so she can safely examine the teeth and carry out dental work. Another routine work we commonly do is vaccinations. We vaccinate horses commonly against influenza and tetanus. We give this intramuscularly and there are common three common intramuscular injection sites, the neck muscles, the glutes and the pecs. So what we commonly do is give it via the neck and three landmarks to give you injection via the neck muscles is to find the cranial border of the scapula, which is your shoulder blade, below the nuchal ligament, which is below the mane. And also remember that horses have a S-shaped cervical vertebra, so you want to avoid that as well and find your triangle. Oh my god. Hey guys, so, oh, today, <laughs> so now we're on break and we're eating lunch in the car and the Morris in his car vlog! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, sorry, Katie, you were saying? Maybe they'll have something um, I can get to pass it more of them. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've been to a Morris because I don't have them down. They're good! Alright, we're gonna eat our lunch. Chat to you guys later! <laughs> So we got our chocolate <laughs> milk shake <laughs> and we're going to the next call. Bye. <laughs> Other things include wounds. So if a horse has kicked itself or kicked a fence and has a wound down its leg, depend on how severe it is, stitch it up and clean it and dress it and bandage it. You also get um, colic cases where the horse has abdominal pain and you have to carry out clinical exam to find out what type of colic it is. So you check for heart rate, check its mucous membranes, check its gut sounds, check its temperature, etc. We also saw an interesting case which involved a swelling on the hock area, which was a thoropin. Never seen one of those before, so that was really interesting. Hey guys, I just got back and we had quite a busy day today. We had a number of vaccines, some dentals, um, some lameness and eye infection cases, so that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so I am still in my boiler suit. Yeah, so overall quite a busy and fun day. And um, yeah, time to shower and tidy up and have some dinner. Hope your day was good too. Hey guys, how are you doing? So, um, today, this morning, is the second day of our second week of equine ambulatory, and I thought to chat for a bit before we start our morning calls. So, on Sunday, the government um, announced a second lockdown to happen on Thursday. 
and I guess everybody is there's a sort of panic slash anxiousness in the air when everybody's a bit worried about like oh what will happen will we vet students be able to graduate and what will happen to the university in general for the vet school luckily at the moment it's still business as usual vet practices are still able to um, function and take in cases um, of course in a covid safe manner so that's good news for us, um, but I feel for a lot of other people who are probably facing more difficult times now. I guess it's not a great time, but I guess no one can predict what will happen in the future and it's important to just do your best each day and live each day as it comes. Try not to plan too far ahead oh dear. Uh, because no one knows what will happen, um, but yeah. I think we will be fine, hopefully, fingers crossed. And I really hope that um, we can graduate on time. I think the vet school is trying to get us to graduate on time and luckily we can still do rotations now. And fingers crossed, fingers crossed it stays the same way. And yeah, okay, I guess that's it. All right. <laughs> Home time. So thank you so much again for watching this video. If you want to see more vlogs, you can click here. And if you want to see some interviews with other vet students, click here. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.